Human Rights Council of the United Nations is an extremely political body. The reports produced, the allegations fabricated are all ridiculous. I mean, Israel is exemplary in trying to do its best in order to comply with international law. Not only do we comply with international law, and we do it practically. I mean, there is a military lawyer in every division, in every, in, in every regiment, and we, we do it superbly. Uh, and everyone knows what the principle of distinction demands. Every, every commander understands what is required by the proportionality principle. I mean, we, we know it, we do it. Uh, sometimes, perhaps, we, we, mis we, we make uh, mistakes, sometimes there are all kinds of errors. Perhaps here and there, there is a, uh, one of the troops that doesn't uh, behave properly, like involved in some looting, but by and large, we, are, uh, we act perfectly well. And allegations concerning, uh, concerning uh, crimes against humanity or war crimes and things like this are, don't hold water. We should jeopardize the life of troops in order to uh, diminish uh, some danger to the life of the uh, neighbors of a terrorist. It's a very important one. But it cannot be asked simply without uh, becoming aware of the battery of warning methods that we use. We distribute leaflets, we break into radio and television programs, we make hundreds of thousands of phone calls in order to warn people that they, the apartments, houses where they, present, where they are presently uh, reside are going to become part of a war zone and therefore they should evacuate them in order to save their lives and almost all of them do it. So, so we warn people. When we warn people, those uh, neighbors of the terrorists that have remained there have rendered themselves human shields of the terrorists. And we, don't, we are not allowed morally and ethically uh, to uh, jeopardize the life of troops in order to save the life or diminish the jeopardy to human shields of terrorists. Okay, our Supreme Court has banned the usage of uh, the procedure, uh, so-called a neighbor procedure, which means employing a neighbor in order to uh, uh, try to convince a terrorist to surrender. So it's banned and nobody within the IDF uh, uh, follows it and does it. I mean, so it's a non-existent uh, procedure. However, I think uh, the, there is some uh, conceptual mistake in totally banning it. I mean, just half of it should have been banned. One has to draw a distinction between uh, telling a Palestinian person who is not involved in, in hostilities, in, in terror activities, to participate in our military missions. I mean, that's out, that's, that, that's illegitimate, immoral, that, that's uh, impossible to do. However, we, there is another way of employing such a person, namely, in our attempt that doesn't jeopardize him to diminish the casualties among the Palestinians. So we would like, a, like to be able, I mean, we should have, been able to employ a Palestinian in our attempt to diminish casualties among Palestinians. And this was also banned, and that's a mistake, in, in my view. The Hamas are utterly immoral in their activities. Not only do they violate every principle in the book of international law by attacking our citizens, by confusing the, by, by blurring the distinction between combatants and non-combatants within their area. Not only do they do that, but they are not interested at all in, in creating situations under which we are bound to cause casualties among their citizens. I mean, they attack us. We can, uh, we can do something in order to defend ourselves by the Iron Dome. 
uh, equipment. But Iron Dome is not perfect, it's just 90% interception. So there are 10%, 10% of thousands of rockets are hundreds of rockets. So we must attack our citizenry, so, sorry, so we must defend our citizenry by attacking the sources of danger. But the sources of danger are in residential areas. So we warn them and want, want them to leave, but not everyone there leaves. And so we see those miserable citizens who get killed because we attacked their terrorist neighbors. And they're happy about it because they can show the whole world that Israel kills citizens. But the fact that Israel uh, attack, attacks the terrorists in a way that inevitably causes collateral damage doesn't show that we are interested in killing those people, it doesn't show that we have not done our best in order to avoid collateral damage, it doesn't show we are involved in any type of uh, war crimes or the like. Okay, there are quite a number of people in Israel who uh, mistakenly interpret a certain uh, military procedure and draw a consequence from it as if the military procedures require that in order to foil an attempt to uh, abduct a soldier, his comrades may kill him, may shoot at him and uh, kill him and the, and the abductors. I mean, this is a grave mistake. On whatever level you look at it, it's a mistake. Legally, uh, religiously, ethically, morally, you name it, it's wrong. It's wrong to kill your own comrades in order uh, to uh, make it easier for the government to negotiate uh, release of people in jail in order for the uh, soldier or the, or the cadaver to be returned. I mean, the value of the life of a, an Israeli soldier is much more important the, the, than the value of foiling an abduction attempt.